Breaking news this afternoon on NEA Report is a manhunt is underway near Monette, and we don't know a whole lot about this, but we're going to tell you what we know now as authorities are combing the area and drivers reportedly seeing authorities all over the place, just like you can see in these photos we're showing you here that were sent along to us. It's actually one photo that we're uh, chopping up. Uh, to show you different elements of it, uh, and we'll show you the full thing here in a second, by Sean Michael Fleming. Uh, authorities this afternoon involved in a high-speed chase exceeding over 100 miles per hour and concluding in and around the community of Monette. This photo sent along to us shows state police, local authorities, and others uh, really just combing through uh, the area trying to find the suspect or suspects at least. A uh, short time ago, Jonesboro Sun sent out an update that deputies were searching for one person who stole a vehicle and ran from officers in the area of Monette and Leechville. The scanner traffic that I've been discussing from my uh, with my friend Lon Teagles at Northeast Arkansas News uh, indicates that uh, the dogs are on the way. Actually, they're probably already out there searching canine units. Um, and uh, a guy apparently drove a Mustang off of that bridge. You can see the bridge kind of in the background there. Uh, apparently, yeah, see, there it is. Apparently, the guy drove off that. Uh, and uh, it says that a woman was captured in the water, at least. That's what uh, uh, he... Uh, perceived to have heard my friend Lon on the uh, scanner there when we hope to find out more information about this but of course if authorities are out there in the middle of a search well uh, you know they're they're having their priorities to say the very least uh, still following this one apparently it concluded around Highway 18 and uh, 533 again that's nearby Monette and uh, if you see anybody out running around and authorities chase them well you might want to stay indoors today <laughs> More breaking news to come at you with this afternoon on NEA Report. As we are showing you, I want to show you now uh, a map of where an accident has taken place. We're talking about an accident that has happened. It's north of Bono, a 63 wreck that's reportedly a head-on collision. I've got E911 Director Jeff Presley standing by uh, with a live report to give us more information about this accident. On the phone right now with Jeff Presley, Jonesboro, and Craighead County E911 Director of Wreck happening on Highway 63. I know I've got you on the phone right after it all happened and you probably don't have a whole lot, but maybe you can tell us what you know. Yeah, in the last 20 minutes or so, we received several calls about a head-on collision. It's going to be around the Paul Switch area on Highway 63 north of Bono, uh, just uh, south of the county line around CR 159. Okay. Uh, at this time, we do have uh, state police, uh, Bono units, uh, Bono rescue, Jonesboro police and fire, or Jonesboro rescue units on the scene. Uh, we have that road closed right now, so it's a very serious accident. Uh, we did have a report of a vehicle fire and entrapment, so we have crews working out there. If you're headed out that way, uh, expect delays. Uh, traffic is at a standstill. You mentioned, what? I'm sorry, what was the road, the county road this is at? Uh, it's going to be around County Road 159. That's okay. going to be just south of the county line there past that uh, liquor store. And this is, is this off of... Uh, of the highway or is it on the highway we believe no it's actually on highway 63 it is okay just right around that area well we're looking in that area right around where that murphy station is before you get to sedgwick so uh if folks are driving in and aware there this afternoon we hopefully uh we'll have them kind of slow down and keep a uh, watch out for the responders out there so. Yeah, this is going to be a busy scene for a while, so uh, if you need to travel north, you may want to make arrangements and go a different route. Jeff Presley from E911 will let you get back to work, but we appreciate you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Uh The head of the Reclamation House in Jonesboro is accused of three different misdemeanors uh, from a traffic incident that happened over the weekend. It stemmed from an incident where a driver reported Kathy Franz uh, to a police officer in Bay for driving all over the road and appearing to be falling asleep at the wheel. Uh, she was arrested Saturday night by the Bay Police Department. The charge is DWI-1, refusal to submit, and hazardous driving. Uh, that third of which was actually a citation. It just goes along with the rest. Now, the report was obtained by NEA Report. It says it all began at 7.52 Saturday night. A motorist talked to Officer David Milam that 
the lady in the black Jeep in front of them was falling asleep or something, it said, because she was running off the road driving hazardously. Milam pulled out, it says, and caught up to the Jeep where he reported seeing it nearly hit a vehicle turning right onto Morgan Street. He initiated his lights, started the traffic stop at 463 in Bruner Street. The officer asked for her license, registration, and proof of insurance, but before he got him, he said he noticed smelling alcohol. Uh, when he asked Fran if she, friends if she had been drinking, she reportedly said she had a couple of beers at the pool. Uh, then she told him she had a handgun in her glove box, reached for it, laid it out on the dash. Uh, it said he instructed her to instead just hand the weapon to him, and he took it. Around this time, Officer Timothy Burns arrived at the scene, and he too made contact with Franz. It said that he could also smell a strong odor of alcohol. That's what the report said. Uh, his exact quote was, uh, that Franz appeared to have uh, appeared to be somewhat disoriented and her movements were slow. Quote, her eyes were bloodshot and watery uh, as well. Bay police began a field sobriety test to determine her level of intoxication. Through the entire test, officers had to instruct her multiple times, uh, said she swayed back and forth. Franz told police she had a problem with her balance and felt as if the road was slanted. The officers allowed her to move and continue the test. Repeatedly, the officer said he had to place Franz back into the starting position for the walk and turn test. The officer said it was uh, very apparent to him she was over the legal limit to be operating a motor vehicle. He said he requested she turn around and put her hands behind her back, and she actually did not at first, according to his report, pulling slightly away, placing her right hand on top of the officers and asking if they could talk about this. It took three additional attempted requests for before she uh, complied, but the problems did not stop there. Uh, at the jail, the problems continued as the two entered the blood alcohol content room. The report said the officer read her her rights, DWI rights, uh, and was going over it to make sure she understood it. But she said she wanted a copy to read for herself, so the officer gave her a copy. But then she said it was a terrible copy and she couldn't read it. Uh, he said the, office, the uh, copy appeared to be fine. He said that he was reading directly from the document. But she argued some of the words were not legible. So the officer tried his best that he could, it says in the report, to help her understand what was going on. Uh, but he reported specifically he thought her understanding, her lack of it thereof perhaps, was un was actually was intentional. His exact words, it appeared to me that Franz wasn't actually making an attempt to read the document only to prolong the testing, but I allowed her every opportunity to look over the document uh, and it continued on. She signed the document, but then refused to take a breathalyzer test and refused to sign her citations as well. All of this was reportedly caught on dash and body cameras. Uh, and she was written citations for DWI 1 and the refusal to submit, as I explained there, along with the hazardous driving. Was scheduled to be in court on Tuesday, and she's currently being represented by attorney Skip Mooney Jr. of Jonesboro. We asked for comment. Mooney advised his client uh, not to speak about the case. He gives that advice, he says, to all of his clients. He reiterated that we're all entitled to the legal presumption of innocence, and the government is required to prove each element of a charge beyond a reasonable doubt. It's time for us to take a look at the weather, courtesy of New Wave Wireless, home of the $49 iPhone screen repair. And heat advisories will be in effect for us today and tomorrow, possibly, probably on Saturday too. It's set to be a hot three or four days as we are rolling into the weekend with temperatures around the 97 degree mark every single day. What it will look like tonight, 78 with mostly clear skies, sunny and hot tomorrow with a heat index as high as 110. Setting on top of those temperatures, 97 degrees. Uh, Friday night, mostly clear, low around 78. Expect another hot day Saturday, the same high temperature, 97. Uh, Saturday night, 77. Sunday, 20% chance for thunderstorms, but another sunny and hot day. To be honest, the storms are probably just going to make the humidity go even higher and not really do anything to that temperature. Uh, again, Monday, 20% chance of thunderstorms, but the high around 94. By Tuesday, 93. And Independence Day, the high is expected to be 93 as well, which is great because we definitely would love it if it wasn't sweltering outside, uh, but you still got that 20% chance of thunderstorms on Independence Day. Again, probably not going to happen. 96 in Jonesboro with fair skies right now. 
Turning now to the top story, we first brought you on NEA Report in breaking news this afternoon. A traffic alert has traffic uh, backed up in Bono. I don't have Jeff Presley on the phone with me right now to correct that super, uh, but we do have a uh, traffic alert to bring along to you. Highway 63, right around the point of 159 north of Bono this afternoon, is going to be blocked uh, for a significant period of time uh, for a serious accident. I do have a little bit more information because I had some folks asking uh, uh, what the uh, what the wreck was and and what the vehicles were specifically, uh, it looks like the reporting is that there is a pickup truck and a dump truck involved in an accident out there. One of the vehicles caught fire, uh, but everyone is believed to have gotten out. Uh, report, however, did indicate there may have been entrapment uh, in one of the vehicles, possibly serious injury. Uh, injuries as well. Uh, I'm not sure. That's a little bit of a conflicting report there that we received, uh, but this would be north of Bono before you would get to the county line and before it would be at that uh, at the alcohol store, the old country store that would be out there on Highway 63. That's what Jeff Presley told me a short time ago. That's about where this wreck uh, would have taken place. Uh, he also said that there's probably going to be responders out there for a good period of time this afternoon with that having happened just uh, a short time ago. In fact, we've got, I think, possibly some, uh, I can get some stuff here from Jeff on the screen. In fact, yeah, uh, all northbound traffic is going to be rerouted onto Highway 230 north of Bono. That is a tweet just a short time ago from the E911 director, uh, Jeff Presley. Uh, some other stuff he's uh, sent out in regards to this on the uh, account said that expect major traffic delays. They know it's an accident with injury. Uh, police fire rescue units have actually been dispatched, Presley said, head on crash with roadblocks. Uh, so you've got uh, that happening. There's actually been, there's another tweet. That was the first one, road blockage uh, out there uh, as well. Okay, uh, but the latest information on this is that uh, traffic is going to be rerouted from 63 onto 230 north of Bono. I'd like to be able to find that if I could. Uh, and show you guys just exactly where it is, but you're talking about tons of farm fields and tons of county roads. Uh, let's see if I could do a quick search of this and find Highway 230 at Bono, uh, and we'll see if this pulls up for us. You guys are watching live on NEA Report. It's 3.25 in the afternoon. Stan Morris reporting along with you on a day where we uh, have a lot of breaking news stuff that's going on right now. Uh, we're trying to pull up a live map of Bono, see if we can show you uh, uh, the precise location that traffic is going to be rerouted on. It's Highway uh, 230 north of Bono that's going to see the traffic rerouted. Uh, this is 230 right here, and let's see if we're in somewhere like, uh, you know, the Sahara Desert, or if this is somewhere perhaps anywhere near where we're even talking about. Uh, I don't think it is. Uh, okay, nonetheless, if you uh, are driving in to uh, Jonesboro today or you're driving out of Jonesboro and you're using Highway 63, I just want to make sure everyone is fully aware. Okay, there it is actually right there. Yes, that's correct. Uh, <clears throat> they're using 230, Highway 230, uh, to bypass uh, traffic. It's going to be rerouted there uh, to get, uh, uh, it says northbound traffic will be rerouted on the Highway 230 north of Bono. So if you're headed north, say for instance you're going to Walnut Ridge or Pocahontas, they're going to route you at Bono. This is the bypass. This would be 63B, the one that used to go through the town. All of us old folks like myself remember before the bypass existed for Bono. Well, that, they're going to have you guys take a left over here and take 230 to bypass this accident so you can continue on your way. That's the latest update from Jonesboro's E911 director, Jeff Presley, on a traffic alert we have this afternoon and breaking news uh, to bring along to you. I just want to show you that one more time since I had that tweet up while I was describing where you're going to be going. This is Bono. You're going to be heading out 230 right here. This is 230. It's running parallel, pretty much uh, intersecting the city. So uh, if you're driving out uh, north of uh, uh, Bono on Highway 63, pr be prepared, folks, to take a detour. Uh, at the same time, we also want to update everybody on the breaking news situation that is going on in Monette this afternoon uh, where there is a reported manhunt that's going on. Uh, we don't have a lot of information on that right now except to say that it was a traffic chase and a high-speed chase that the driver bailed on uh, that ended up uh, fleeing and that authorities have been using canine units and other things to track the suspect. A report from the Jonesboro Sun a short time ago had uh, indicated that the authorities were still looking for the guy uh, but that was at about 140 talking about almost two hours ago, so we don't know what the uh, latest update on that is, uh, but I had checked in with Lon Teagles as of about an hour and a half, I think, ago. It was still about the same. 
Okay, it's 328 right now. While we're talking about Independence Day week, let's talk about the sanitation schedule for next week. And we want to show you that because, well, we got it sent to us. Here it is, normal Monday and Tuesday, but on Wednesday it's going to be closed because it's Independence Day. Thursday's Thursday route, Friday, Wednesday, and Friday route. That's how it's going to go next week. But there's more to sanitation next week than just a little bit of a different trash pickup schedule. In fact, the city of Jonesboro getting set to launch their Blue Bin Recycling Program next week. Some exclusive details about that next. How you could save a whole lot of money. And how you probably should do it now, if you're going to. Next on NEA Report. Haley Norris, Realtor. So, no. Should I make my hair go like this? Whether you need to buy, sell, or lease. Haley, can I use my hands? Or is yeah. that, where, where are my hands? Where do they go? Just Haley. Say, <laughs> just say Haley. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Whether, <laughs> you need my expertise. Haley Norris, Realtor. Or even do a commercial lease. Haley Norris, Realtor. Do, should I say Remax Real Estate Center or not? Is that too salesy? No, that's good. My average days on market, is just 50 days. You need my expertise. And that means I'm putting more money back in your pocket. Family Medical Clinic of Walnut Ridge and Bono are your neighborhood health care providers, and we're now accepting new patients. We know you have a tight schedule, so we're here six days a week at both locations from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Walk-ins are welcome. In Walnut Ridge, stop by 1045 West Main Street or call us to make an appointment, 886-8300. In Bono, we're on Highway 63 North or call 930-9990. Walnut Ridge Family Medical Clinic and Bono Family Medical Clinic, here for you when you need us. There's a look at beautiful Spring River at Hardy and a place where a lot of folks are going to be going probably over the next week or so. But make sure you have more luck than a couple from Craighead County from the Jonesboro area that got lost after they went on a river trip around 11.30 a.m. on Wednesday. It was happening in Sharp County and authorities worked with them from Lawrence County as well uh, to find the two missing kayakers. A search began with ground units combing. Uh, through the different areas. Of course, we're talking about the hills. We're talking about a lot of forests, too. Very tough to, uh, to uh, search on foot. All the drones that are coming out and that kind of technology, that's helping exponentially with this type of stuff. Um, and they set up a boat and launched it as well. In fact, they tried to make contact by cell service, but you, if you've ever been up there, you know that's pretty tough to do if you're lucky, especially if you've got AT&T. Sorry, Adam. Uh, around 10.30 p.m., uh, that's when the boat team... They got a little lucky. They located uh, two life vests, a kayak, and other stuff. It was all abandoned, though. So they apparently left the river at some time. And sure enough, they were found walking along the highway uh, about three miles away from Ravenden, sunburned, tired, probably a little dehydrated, but thankfully uninjured. Uh, could have been a lot worse, but fortunately, ended up being okay. Uh, I got back to Hardy. Eventually got back home. We don't know who they are, but we hope you're feeling okay today. And don't let that incident scare you off of Spring River. Do you have one of these beauties yet? Well, if not, then you better get on top of it because the time is running out for you to pick up a Jonesboro recycling bin at the discounted rate, which is less than half the price of what it's going to go up to in just a short short. The city had to pay $50 or so for these bins, right? And it's so cool that our city invested into recycling, into going green, because they've given us an opportunity to buy them for only $20. But the catch is, you gotta prepay them. You gotta get it now. You can't be waiting any longer. Now, I got a little bit of a secret for you guys, okay? I hinted at this in the story I wrote earlier. The city of Jonesboro is going to extend the period to allow people to purchase these for $20. But it's not going to be extended for long, right? And if you're wanting to get yours now, you want to get at the top of the list. Here's something else cool I asked for because I'm a landlord and I have rental houses and I thought about all you rental house owners out there or apartment owners or whatnot. You can get one per residence. 
for twenty dollars. So you get one for all of your rentals for twenty dollars. That way, the tenants aren't overflowing the garbage bin all the time. They can help the community out, too. Or let them buy it and maybe give them a little bit of a discount on the rent that month. Just an idea. Stop procrastinating, though. Get this sucker ordered, 870-932-3042. 3042. Uh, it's, as I said, $20. If you get this purchase made well before they go up, it's supposed to end tomorrow. Right? And that's the only day I can promise you that you're going to get this $20 price. But I'm pretty sure they're going to extend it uh, because I got a little birdie that told me some news. So, uh, and as you can see there, it's got a really easy to read and understand uh, label on the front of it. I'm not sure all of them are going to be put out the same day as mine, which is every Monday, first and third Monday. Uh, but I know they all accept the same materials, number one and two plastics, no plastic bags, aluminum, cardboard, Mixed paper, newspapers, and magazines. You, the tin cans, when it mentions those, are talking about soup cans, bean cans, all that kind of stuff. Just rinse it out a little bit. Boom. Throw it in there. You're good. You place the items loose in the can, right? There's no more garbage bags, no more blue bags. It's all dropped inside of it. And you can get your can dropped off by paying only $20. Call them that number I told you about. I'm going to throw it on the screen one more time for you to get a chance. 932-3042. I love my town. Love cleaning up in my town. I like to go out and walk and pick up litter on the side of the road, as a lot of folks will tell you. I post pictures of that. It's kind of like a point of pride to see how full I can get my truck. Now this is a better option than ever because I don't have to call a city and ask for like five or six blue bags to be dropped off because I would recycle the garbage too. Just an idea. Just a way for you to maybe get a little fun activity in this summer. Maybe even get a little exercise in. Maybe even help out the environment, too. And thanks a bunch to the city of Jonesboro, Mayor Harold Perrin, and others for deciding to do this. This is well worth uh, the, our time. This is well worth our time. And it's a well worth it program, too. Before we wrap up our coverage today on NEA Report, we want to continue with live breaking news coverage at 335 of a head-on wreck north of Bono. Traffic is now closed in both directions and traffic being rerouted northbound onto this county road, County Road 230. It would actually begin as West Church Street out of Bono. You would uh, see it drive right up next to the come and go if you were driving into Bono. But if you're headed northbound this afternoon on the bypass, they're going to redirect you onto that. And if you're headed southbound on 63 and you're headed into Bono, then you're probably going to be rerouted as well. Although I don't have the exact location that they're going to reroute you, I do know that uh, that, that is a pretty serious accident out there, and it may be a while before that uh, first responders are able to get that cleaned up. That's the latest from NEA Report. We invite you to like us on Facebook and follow us too. Subscribe on YouTube if you've not already. And as somebody, our good friend uh, Rebecca asked, uh, let's see. Did I, if I said Brooklyn, by the way, this is Bono. Uh, forgive me. Uh, as our good friend Rebecca mentioned, I'm also on Twitch.tv at Stan Morris. So you can find me playing video games there or something. Uh, but anyway, I'm Stan Morris. Now you're up to date on NEA Report with breaking news coverage and wall-to-wall -wall news. Back tomorrow with more news from Northeast Arkansas.